Hey Floss2, this is Brian. Welcome back. This is my 10th video, and my plans are for this video are to have a combined December 2016, uh, annual 2016 update of where I am with all of my projects. And I also plan on briefly discussing my plans for 2017, such as they are. Um, this is a little bit late. Uh, part of the reason for that is that uh, we were out of town uh, for the week between Christmas and New Year's and only got back a couple of days ago. We've been trying to get back into the swing of, of work and school and all that kind of stuff. And so I finally found some time to actually actually film a video. Uh, I hope everybody had a great, great holidays. Uh, we did. Uh, we uh, Christmas was nice and quiet. We just stayed home. Uh, we went to church uh, for for about an hour and then came home and spent Christmas with, with just our family. Uh, one thing that made it really special is that we got to talk to my son. I have a son who is in Mexico right now. And we trade emails back and forth. But on Christmas Day, we got to talk to him. Uh, we, we actually Skyped him uh, for about an hour. Um, that's the first time that we've been able to do that since... Uh, last May. So it was really neat to to see him. Um, he's been he's been in Mexico for uh, just over a year, about 14 months, and it's it's interesting to see him and see how he's how he's grown and matured a little bit. Um, and it was just really great to talk to him. And then we uh, we went up to Utah to spend time with with family uh, for the for the rest of the Christmas break. Uh, we took my daughter back to school. Uh, she goes to BYU. Um, and we also, while we were up there, we went to a, a BYU basketball game. It was, we thought that it would, that the Marriott Center would be pretty empty because it was break between Christmas and New Year's and there wouldn't be very many people around. But the Marriott Center was pretty full and we ended up uh, we ended up on the benches clear up in the nosebleed section. Uh, we were so far up that uh, my wife and my mother-in-law and I got to could put our backs against the against the wall of the Marriott Center. It wasn't much of a game. BYU uh, won by over 30 points, so it was it was really quite boring. And um, I actually went to Utah State, so I'm not much of a BYU fan. I just go along just to just to be with my family. Uh, but it was it was kind of fun. Um, uh, we've we've lived down here in 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 Arizona for uh, twelve and a half years now, and going up there in the winter time uh, proves to us that we are we are true wimps. Um, it was just really cold, and we didn't really want to do much of anything. We just kind of hunkered down in the house and hung out with my with my mother in law. If you saw Kay's last video. Um, she she showed snow. I was up there in that snowstorm. I got a couple of chances to uh, fire up my mother-in-law's snowblower and and dig her out of the snow. I think that while we were up there, there was a good six or eight, eight, eight maybe even eight inches of snow that fell. And so that just reminded me of uh, all the pain that snow is. Um, so it was cold. It was snowy. We're glad to be back down here. It's interesting. Uh, living in Arizona really turns you into a wimp. I remember grew, I grew up in Idaho, and you know the winters where the snow was an inconvenience, and you just you just dealt with it. And and I mean it didn't matter if it was storming or or anything like that. You 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 did your stuff. And now it's like it it's it a snowstorm. I don't even want to go out in it. I don't want to. I don't want to deal with it. So, but anyway, we're back in. We're back home, and we had a, had a great time. I hope that you did too as well. One of the things that I haven't told you is that I also know how to knit and crochet. My my mom my mom taught me how to crochet when I was a kid, and my there was a time when I kind of put cross stitch aside and taught myself how to knit, um, and. Since since then, I've I've given up I've given up that uh, basic partly because it's too hot to knit in Arizona, 
and you only have about a a week or so that where it's cold enough that you can actually wear a sweater or something like that. Um, this is one of the sweaters that I knit. It's a Farrah Isle sweater. Um, I only have another sweater to show for it, and I have several pairs of socks. But I decided that I I could only have one crafty hobby, and decided that cross stitch was was what I really wanted to do. So I haven't knit for a long time. But my wife seems determined to to not let me give it up. Um, she uh, she has a grandmother. That, one of her grandmothers uh, was a pro prolific crocheter. She crocheted uh, Afghans for all of her all of her children and all of her grandchildren, and she had. Uh, eight children and I mean my wife has a ton of cousins and um, one of the things that she did that my mother-in-law has is she crocheted a, a nativity scene and my mother-in-law used to bring it out and let the kids play with it because it was something that was kind of kind of you know more more robust that the kids could could play with well my wife has decided she wants something like that and she wants me to she wants me to make one of those. And um, I, to I told her that I wouldn't be able to figure out how to do it just by looking at that nativity set that I would, but that I would have to have to find a pattern. So I'm, I'm asking you guys, I, I found a book on Amazon that, that has a, uh, instructions on how to, how to knit a nativity scene. If any of you know of any patterns out there or anything that are nat nativity scene related, um, I'd be interested to see if you if uh, if you have any recommendations. Um, I guess I'm gonna have to I guess I'm gonna have to do that for my wife. Uh, those are that's kind of the the life update. Um, I so so now I just want to uh, kind of review. Uh, my stitching for 2016 and talk about also what I did in December. Um, December was a great month as far as cross stitching goes. I actually I was able to to stitch quite a bit um, since I was on vacation and we weren't doing much. I got a lot of time to stitch uh, in Utah and was able to able to accomplish quite a bit. So I'm pretty happy with with my progress from December. Um, now, uh, as I look back on 2016, I had three finishes, and that seems kind of pitiful. And I've decided that um, finish, uh, finishing, counting finishes isn't really a good metric for, for me because most of the projects that I work on are, are huge, and, and so it, it takes a long time to, to get a finish. So, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you my graphs and I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you kind of, kind of what I accomplished because it's kind of cool. Um, first of all, we'll look at the years. So this is, this, this first graph that I'm showing you, this is uh, the trend, uh, the number of stitches and the number of days that I stitched in each month. You'll notice that I, I recovered from my uh, dismal November uh, progress. I, I actually worked on stuff where I could count stitches and I had I had more more days where I stitched. The next graph I'm going to show you is a, a graph that shows everything that I worked on Decem in December with the number of days that I spent on it. And you'll see that I worked on quite a quite a few projects and that I had I had had a lot of days that I stitched. There were only two days that I didn't stitch in December and I was able to, to do quite a bit. Also, um, here's a graph of the number of stitches that I put in December on each project. As always, you'll see that Corazon Sampler has a huge number of stitches, and of course that's uh, misleading because there's so much space in that piece that it's really easy to count up a, number, a lot of stitches. Um, and then here's the same thing for the entire year. Uh, here's a graph of everything that I worked on in 2016 uh, with the number of days that I worked on each project. Um, you'll probably see a couple of things that are interesting about this. Uh, first of all, you'll see that there were 50 days in 2016 uh, when I didn't stitch. That, that kind of surprises me. That means that 
I, I had over a month, about a month and a half. Oh, yeah, a month and two thirds where I didn't stitch. And that kind of surprises me. It didn't feel like I'd, I'd miss that many days. Uh, you'll also notice that there's two projects on here that I haven't shown you or I haven't ever talked about. Uh, one is called the Noah's Ark Sampler. That's the Noah's Ark Sampler by Teresa Winsler. Um, that's one of my old whips that I decided I was going to start working on. And I, if you've seen that piece, it's a picture of Noah's Ark in the middle with an alphabet. And then it's surrounded by blocks. And each block has a, a, an, a pair of animals that are stitched one over one. And I stitched one, one pair of animals. And I, I, didn't, I don't like the fabric I'm using on it now because it's, it's really gauzy. And there's a lot of, you can see through it. I don't like that. And so, so the story behind that piece is when my kids were, were little and bo barely born, you know, when they were really small, I kind of had a goal that I was going to stitch some kind of Noah's Ark piece for each of them. And I did one. And then, and, and I started on this Teresa Wentzler Noah's Ark, and then I kind of stopped cross-stitching for a while. And so, and now my kids are old, and I think they would like, wouldn't think that Noah's Ark would be all that wonderful. So I don't really have a lot of motivation to, to work on it. And I, I'm really hating it because of all the over one animals. Um, and so as of right now, I believe I'm going to, I'm not, I'm going to stop work, stop working on that piece. Um, so I guess that's, that's a give up. Uh, the other piece on here that I haven't talked about is O Jerusalem. Uh, that's a cross stitched kit by Bucilla. It's another uh, project that I started years and years ago. Um, it's, it's a cross-stitch adaptation of a painting by Greg Olson. I love that painting. It's a picture of Christ sitting on the Mount of Olives looking over the old city of Jerusalem. And I really wanted to, I really wanted to stitch that, and I, I pulled it out and started working on it. And, uh, you know, I decided I was going to start working diagonally, and, and I'm, I made the really stupid mistake of counting over to a corner and working from that corner. And when I got close to the area where I stitched, and I, I counted like, I don't know how I did this. I counted four or five times to make sure that, that I was right and I was, in the, I was starting in the right position. But when I got over closer to the area that I had stitched, I found out that I counted one stitch over. And I just don't know how I can fudge that. Um, if, if I was one stitch closer, I think I could fudge it because I could take out stitches along, along the column all the way up. But I'm not sure how, how, to, how I could add stitches to make it look good. What I'm planning on doing is I'm planning on restarting that project. Um, I've already bought, I've, with, with new DMC floss, I'm, I converted everything over to, to DMC and I bought a new piece of fabric that's uh, even weave instead of of Ada, and because of that, uh, I, I would rather stitch it on even weave anyway. So I'm going to restart that sometime in the future. I don't know when, but but I'm going to start it sometime in the future. Um, so that's a long time talking about my two the projects I worked on in 2016. Uh, here's a graph showing the the number of stitches that I worked on. You'll, you'll find it interesting. I worked on Autumn Magic um, the, the, the most number of days. You might have noticed that in my previous uh, video, but when you look at the number of stitches I put in Autumn Magic, it's actually uh, one of the lower numbers. So Autumn Magic um, is just, it, it, that's the piece that, that slows me down the most, I guess. Um, so uh, those are my graphs. And now I'm going to go over all of my projects that I worked on in 2016. Uh, the ones that I worked on in 20 in December, I'm going to show you. Um, I'm going to show you what I was able to accomplish in December as well. So first of all, I want to show you what I finished in 2016. And the first, the first piece that I finished, I finished on like the 4th of January, and I've shown you this before, but so. 
it's almost I almost consider it like a 2015 piece and that's this is the um, 12 days of, the 12 days um, this was a freebie that was a freebie stitch along that was released by Plum Street Samplers last last year on in 2015 and I had I had a week off from work where I could just stitch and so I stitched this entire thing uh, be, basically from like the 23rd of December to the 3rd of January I'm really like I really like how it turned out but now that I look at it and after seeing uh, Vana the Twisted Stitchers video about all of her Christmas ornaments I look at this now and I think I wish that I'd stitched these as ornaments because she's really made me think that that I need to to do do some ornaments. I've never really wanted to do them because like I say I I'm a I'm a size snob and if it's if it's not big it doesn't seem like it's worth stitching but she's kind of changed my mind a little bit. So I don't know I may I may pull this out again and stitch each square and in order as an ornament I I don't like doing things twice, so but I'm I'm kind of considering what I can do to to make some some ornaments. Uh, the the next piece that I worked that I finished um, was my mallard duck. I finished this in October, and of course I've shown you this before. Um, I really like this duck. I really like this duck and how it looks. I it's a nice quick finish. Um, it did. It only took me like eight days to stitch, when you count the number of days that I stitched on it. And then the final piece that I finished. I'm not going to show it to you. It's the our family tree. I showed you it, it to you in my last video. It just seems a pain to to pull it out and show it to you when I'm I'm not going to be able to show you the entire piece. So those are my three finishes for 2016. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm, I mean, I didn't. I don't know that I really expected to finish much more, uh, but I found that I, I, when I did finish those last two pieces, I found that it was really, really kind of nice. So I'm, when I talk about 2017, I'm going to talk about what I'm going to do to try to get uh, more finishes. Okay, so now let's go through my rotation, and we'll we'll talk about uh, what I was able to accomplish. Um, the first thing, the first piece in my rotation is Autumn Magic. And I'm going to show you, first of all, I have a picture of what this looked like at the beginning of the year. And I'm going to show that to you now. So you'll see I only had a couple of columns done. Actually, I think it's three columns and I had started a fourth. And now uh, I'm, I'm going to show you what it looks like now. I didn't really work, I haven't really worked on this, well, I haven't worked on this since you last saw it. I did, I did stitch on it last night because it's, it's come up on, on my rotation again. So I'm going to show you, it's a little bit different from what you saw, but I'm not going to show you what it looked like at the beginning of December because you've seen it and I, there, there's not enough progress to, to show you anything. But, so this is what it looks like now and I guess I better hold up my threads. So you'll see I started stitching diagonally. I've done this whole corner down here and then I've started working up here on, on one page at a time and I'm, I'm going to continue to to stitch one page at a time diagonally. If you look really close I, I it's kind of hard to see but I don't know if you'll be able to see it but down here you're, the, you can kind of the the railing for the porch is starting to show up and of course all I've been doing is a lot of trees and when I get over here I'm going to see actually see some of the house which I'm kind of excited about so last night I finished this diagonal and started this one and I'm excited because my diagonals are going to start to shrink you can see this is the top of the page and this is the side of the page now so you can see kind of what the size of the page is and it's looking, I think it's looking really good. I'm excited, I'm, I'm actually pretty excited to be working on this. Um, my goal for, I kind of have a goal. I would be very glad for 2017 if I finished all of my pages that I've started. Um, 
that's what I'm hoping to be able to accomplish. I think that's possible because um, I have like three partial pages that I can stitch that I need to stitch, and I think that's that's very doable in 2016 based on the way I'm planning on doing things. Uh, the next piece, this I worked on in December, so I'm gonna sh I'm gonna show you first of all. Uh, this is my uh, verandas of verandas of South Battery. This is what it looks like. And is of course it's a street scene in Charleston, South Carolina. Sorry for the glare. And I'm gonna uh, this is one of my older whips, so I pulled out a picture that I took of it years ago uh, before I really started working on this again. And I'm gonna show you that now. So this is what it looked like at the beginning of the year. And uh, now I'm going to show you a picture of what it looked like at the beginning of December before I worked on it in December. And that's there. And this is what it looks like now. So you'll see um, I've been able to... I'll, I'll, I'll zoom in over here. So I've been able to stitch a lot more of the blue house. I, the blue house is almost finished and I'm actually beginning to see part of the next house. Uh, it's not really obvious there, but it's there. So I'm getting close to doing this. I think that this is, I think that this piece is going to be the next piece that I'm going to be able to finish. So my goal for 2017 is to finish this piece. And that I'm really happy with. The next piece that I worked on is my winter sampler. And that looks like this. It's a design by Cooler Design Studio. Uh, it's kind of a Victorian themed sampler of, with winter motifs in it. And I started this in 2016, so I can't show you a picture of what it looked like at the beginning of the year. But I am going to show you a picture of what it looked like uh, the last time you saw it. So that's what it looked like the last time you saw it. And this is what it looks like now. So you'll see I finished another diagonal. Um, my diagonals are getting pretty long, so I'm not really able to do a whole lot. But I, I finished another diagonal. This uh, winter ski seam is finished. Here's more of Santa showing up. This is a postcard that will have a snowman in it that's here. And now I have a headless gingerbread man, and you'll see I've hit the edge of the I've hit the edge now. So now my diagonals are going to be this the same length for I think I've got three or four diagonals before I hit this corner up here. Uh, let's see what else up here. There's there's a mouse. This is this is a mouse hanging on the pendulum pendulum of the clock. So, and this is, this is really fun to stitch, um, and, and I'm really enjoying it. I'm going to start seeing a popcorn and cranberry border up here. Um, anyway, I'm really happy with, with how things are going with this one. Uh, the next piece that I worked on uh, was Red uh, by Mirabilia. And uh, I just realized I'm forgetting to tell you what I'm stitching that on. I'll put that all in the notes. So if you want to look in the notes, uh, you, can, you can see that. Uh, this is another piece that I started in 2016. So I can't show you what it looked like before I started stitching it. Uh, but I will show you what it looked like the last time you saw it. And this is what I've been able to accomplish. So I'm getting even more done. I, I talked to you about how I had this line that was showing up because of uh, dark threads running back behind the, the, my work. I ended, up, uh, I ended up undoing all of that section. And when I, when I got it all undone, I found that it was, wasn't just one, one thread. There were actually two threads that were kind of bunched together. So I fixed that. I feel much better about that now. And once I, I was really, I was kind of like putting off fixing it. 
And I was just hating this piece <laughs> because of it. And once I fixed it, it's like, oh, this feels much better. So now I'm really, I really love her. I'm not hating her anymore. Now you'll see I've got more of her arm. I think I've got almost all of her arm stitched. And oh, she is getting so close to being finished. I can feel it. At least the cross stitch part. Um, you'll notice, you might notice if you haven't looked, I'm, I'm not stitching the skin one over one. Um, uh, part of the reason for that is, is I don't really, I understand that, first of all, I don't want to deal with the blended threads one over one. Second of all, um, I understand that it gives a, a different, a different texture to the skin. Um, and I understand why people like that. I, I don't particularly like that. I like to, I, I actually like the uniform texture better. And I don't really see much of a point of stitching one over one just to do it. Um, the, uh, the Cinderella that I did had one over one stitching, but part of the reason why it did is it enabled, it put more detail in her face and more detail in, in the trim on her dress. Um, and I, 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 I like that, that there was more detail there, but just stitching one over one just to stitch it, I, I don't, uh, I don't, I, I don't particularly like that idea. So, um, I, you know, that's, that's just my opinion. I, I guess I'm justifying myself for why, why I don't want to do one, one over one. Um, the next, the next piece that I worked on is Corson Sampler. As you'll see, this is my uh, French Alphabet Sampler by Claude Rami Designs. Um, it's a designer in Belgium. And um, I, this is another piece that I started last year. So I, I, I'm not going to show you what it looked like at the beginning of the year, but I am going to show with you what it looked like the last time you saw it. So there, there's what it looked like. Um, so this is what it looks like now. Now this is one of the pieces that I stitched while I was on, on vacation. So I had a lot of time to stitch. I only worked on it five days instead of a full week. And even though I only worked on it five days, I was able to put the flowers in the vase. I finished this alphabet. This alphabet's all done. Uh, there's a bird and a heart. And I came over here and I did the MNOP and then I stitched this alphabet and started another alphabet. Uh, the the cortisone, the heart in the middle motif goes right here. Um, I haven't started working on that yet because I'm trying to decide I'm trying to decide how to even go about stitching that. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch uh, down both sides a little bit and then I'm going to figure out how to start that. I'm really happy with my progress with this and, and the more I stitch the more I love this piece. I just love the way I just love the way it looks. And then um, I decided I wanted to close out the year with Andiforous Groove. So I worked on Andiforous Groove for a couple of days. So just for reference, this is what Andiforous Groove looks like. It's a design by Rosewood Manor. Um, of course, it's a bunch of tree motifs uh, with the verse in the middle. And so even though I stitched on this, oh, first of all, I'll show you what it looked like uh, the last time you saw it, this is another piece that I started in 2016. And this is what it looks like now. So um, I stitched basically all of these trees over here. And even though I only worked on this for two days, um, I finished, and basically there's three pages here. And everything's finished in this third page except for this is where the big tree is going to be. And I'm, I'm going to wait to stitch that. I think I'm going to come up here and I'm going to stitch these, these pages up here until I get to the tree and then I'll stitch the big tree. But as always, uh, my new favorite tree is this one. I just love this. This is the 500 series of greens, which is, I think those are my favorite greens. And I just love the gradient there. I love the gradient on that tree. I think it looks awesome. 
but I, yeah, I'm just, this is just, this is just really fun. I think this tree must have been taken from an Adam and Eve sampler because there's a snake coming up and biting an apple right there. So, but I've seen a bunch of you starting this at the beginning of the year. So I want to say uh, to, uh, I'm afraid to name names because I might forget somebody, but I just want to welcome you all to the club. I'm going to be working on this more this year, so it'll be interesting to see how yours how yours turns out. Um, and then this the next piece that I've that's in my rotation kind of um, this is the beautiful C stitch along. I've actually worked on this uh, since the beginning of the new year, and this is by Eric Shipley. I'll show you a picture of what it looked like the last time you saw it. So the last time I worked on this, I only had uh, two parts stitched and I've been able to stitch enough to be feel like I'm caught up. This has been, I don't know, the, this fabric, may, it, it is really hard to photograph this fabric. Uh, I don't know, the darker fabrics give me problems. So um, basically I stitched all of this and this down here. You know, this motif here, I think I could finish just because of the symmetry of it, but I don't dare because I'm worried that he might have something down here that makes it so it's not symmetrical. Uh, this piece, I kind of guessed, this motif, and I actually, I actually finished this motif, so um, I really like the, I don't know if that's a seahorse or a sea monster, I really like that, and the ship and the lighthouse are really cool. So uh, this, is, this is coming along. And um, as I've been working on this, I realized that um, this blue color here, uh, there's not, I, I need another skein. So I, uh, I ordered another skein from Eric. And um, I've also caved and, and signed up for the, the Mystery Town sampler that, that he's doing. And when I ordered that skein, he actually, uh, he actually refunded me the shipping cost and said, I'm sending out the, the Mystery Town Sampler stitch along fabric and floss the end, at the end of the week. So I'll just, I'll just add that in. So that was really cool. Uh, that, that, that's really cool, cool customer service that he would realize that I had ordered that and just stick it in and not, not charge me postage. So, um, if you've been paying attention, uh, you've probably noticed that there are two pieces that I kind of skipped in my rotation. Uh, the first one is uh, the, the season sampler. I'm just showing you this just as, as for, for sake of completeness, that this is one of the pieces that I worked on this year. And I have to confess, I didn't really like fall, and because of that, the, the fall band, I've really, really kind of fallen out of love with this piece. Um, I, she's released two more parts. There's one more part left. I'm kind of waiting to see what the third part, what the last part looks like. Um, I may, when that part is released, I'll, I'll decide whether or not I want to stitch this or not. I don't know. I. So one of the one of the things that I have all, one of the reasons why I did this is I wanted to to I wanted to figure out if I liked doing um, specialty stitches and part of the reason why I wanted to do that is I've had the uh, Victoria sampler heirloom Christmas sampler for a long time I have all the materials for it but I'm all I. Every time I think about starting it, it really scares me. And part of the reason why it scares me is the first thing you stitch is this, this Christmas tree that's all backstitched. And that just looks like... <laughs> it looks like a real pain to stitch. And then, and then it's all specialty stitches all the way through there. And I've always worried about that. And um, so I decided to do this just to, just to get my, a feel for that. And one of the things that I found with that piece is it's just really fiddly. And I don't, 
I don't like stitching fiddly stuff. I don't like I don't like starting starting a new thread and stitching two or three stitches and then ending it off. It just drives me nuts for some reason. And so this is really fid fiddly, and I've been worried that that heirloom Christmas sampler is really fiddly too. And so I I I don't know if I'll ever ever start that or not. I I have to decide. Uh, there's also another set of designs from her that I really like is I really like her farm series and I'd like to stitch that one time but I have the same fears about that those that they'd be really fiddly so I don't know uh, I may or may not finish that is what I'm saying uh, the other piece that I didn't work on is um, the uh, English garden sampler by Teresa Winsler I kind of skipped this, and there's a reason for that. I'm not. I'm not. This is. I'm not giving up on this. It's just I'm. I'm putting it aside for a while. So those are all the things that I worked with in 2016. I mentioned a little bit earlier that I didn't think that counting the number of finishes that I have was a good metric for uh, measuring the progress that I've had, and that's because I. You'd say, oh, I, I only had three finishes. But when you look at my whips, and with all that I have stitched on those whips, I've really stitched quite a bit, and I'm I, I'm actually pretty surprised at how much I've stitched. I mentioned I had three finishes. Um, I also looked at, at the number of stitches, and in 2016, I um, I stitched 207,410 stitches. <laughs> That's a uh, that's 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 a pretty big number, and so I think that's a better that's a better metric of how much I did in 2016 than than just the number of finishes. However, having said that, I'm going to start talking about what I plan on doing in 2017, and uh, one of the things that I learned about myself uh, towards the end of 2016 is that I can't have as many whips going as I do. Uh, right now, I have nine whips, and if you count uh, the the duck season, uh, the the rest of the the other three of the series for that one, I actually have ten whips, and that's just too much. Uh, it's too much for a couple of reasons. One is it, that it makes my rotation longer. I find that I I want to stitch on pieces more frequently than every two or two and a half months, which is kind of where I am right now with that huge rotation. Uh, I also have found that, that I like having finishes every once in a while. And the more pieces that I have in my rotation, uh, the less often I'm going to have a finish. And if I look at my spreadsheets and kind of when uh, predictions are for, uh, for when I'm going to finish stuff, uh, right now, I'm thinking that if I kept my current rotation, that uh, I would have hardly any finishes in 2017. And I feel like I need finishes. Uh, that helps me feel like I've accomplished a little bit more. So I am changing the way I am stitching. I'm changing my rotation. And my plan is, is that I'm going to have four or five pieces in my rotation. I'm going to set a few of my whips aside for a little bit and I'm going to work on just four pieces. Hopefully that will get me to a point where I get some finishes and then add it, as I finish things I'm going to add things from my whips back into my rotation. So I've, I've kind of thought a lot and have tried to decide what, what pieces I want to stitch in my rotation. That's been really hard because I actually have uh, six pieces that I really love stitching, uh, but I don't. I still want to keep myself down to how to being able to go through go through my rotation once a month. So I've I've debated and debated and I've come up with this. So this this is what my rotation is going to look like. Uh, the first part of my rotation is uh, beautiful C stitch along. Um, I started that at the beginning of this year. I, I stitched on it for a few days, and then I, and then uh, my plan is is I don't think it'll take me an entire week to keep caught up with that. Um, also, I'm signed up for the 
uh, Ship's Manor Mystery Town Stitch Along as well. So when that comes, I may try to figure out how to fit that in. I haven't decided quite yet. But so that is that will take up part of a week. And then the rest of the week, I'm going to work on Autumn Magic, which is this. Um, and I'm going to work on Autumn Magic for the rest of that week and then for another week, for an additional week after that. Uh, the reason why is I want to, uh, the, because it's so huge, I want to give myself as much time stitching as possible. So the next piece after I do Autumn Magic is going to be And a Forest Grew. So another thing I'm doing is I'm kind of giving myself a little bit of, of variation. So I have a full coverage piece than this piece that's motifs. And that's a piece that I think, uh, because it's all motifs, I think that it will stitch up really quickly and I'm pretty sure that I'll be able to finish this uh, at by the end of the year. Um, and then the next piece that I work on after uh, And a Forest grew, grew is going to be uh, Verandas of South Battery. Uh, the reason why I chose this one is because I think I am closest to um, I'm closest to finishing uh, uh, verandas of South Battery, so I'm hoping to get a quick finish so that I can I can put something else in from my from my whips. And then the final piece that I'm working on is uh, the Cor Corazon sampler uh, from Clodo Me Designs. Um, the reason why I have this is it's another change a little bit. I, I really love this piece, and this is stitching up so fast that I'm really sure that I'll be able to finish that uh, in a, a pretty quick t amount of time. So once I get those done, I'm going to add in Winter Sampler in red. And I'm hoping that my goal is uh, that by the end of 2017 that I will have four whips. Uh, one of the things that that kind of taught me this, that I had too many whips, is when I hit October, I really had a desire to stitch something more fall. Uh, fall is my favorite time of month, and I really got an itch to start something. And I went through everything that I have to try to decide what I wanted to start. And when I started thinking about what, what to add, that meant adding another piece to my rotation, and I just couldn't do that. And the same thing happened when December rolled around. I wanted to start something Christmas and just do Christmas. But once again, I looked at my rotation and I just couldn't start anything. I couldn't, I couldn't bear the thought of adding another, another piece to my rotation and, and, in, and increasing the amount of time that I was stitched between project, the same project twice. So I'm hoping that by the end of the year, uh, I'll have cut my whips down enough that maybe I can, uh, in the fall, start something. I don't know. Uh, but I would like to also be able to think well, that when December rolls around that I'll feel good about uh, setting my rotation aside and just stitching on something, starting something Christmas and stitching on it uh, the entire month of December. We'll see what happens. Uh, right now, I really don't have any desires to start anything because, because I've got so much going right now. Um, if I do get a desire to stitch something and I feel like I can can do it, it'll be something really small that won't take up a lot of time to stitch just so I don't don't uh, throw everything out of whack. So that that's my plans for 2017. They're very general, uh, very flexible. We'll see what happens. Uh, but my my big goal is to get rid of some of my whips. Also, um, I'm on Facebook. Uh, you probably you may have seen me there a couple times. I'm I I'm not very good at, at posting on Facebook. Instagram has kind of become my social media of choice. But I am a member of the Stitch from Sash 2017A uh, group, and I plan on stitching from Stash. I've got so much stuff that, and and I've got so much stuff going that um, I really don't have any need to to buy anything else. So. Uh, I am I am a member of that group, so so I will be reporting uh, my progress as I go. So that's uh, that's all of my 
as all of my plans for 2017. Just a couple of other things. Uh, first of all, I want to give another shout out. Uh, we've had, you probably know, but we've had another uh, male stitcher decide to make videos, and that is Pip Stitch. I'll put a link to his channel below if you haven't seen him. And I I really enjoyed the couple of videos that that he is that he has made. I was following him on Instagram for a while, so so it was really exciting to see him start making videos. He's really working on some great stuff, and I encourage you to go check him out. Um, I he he blames me for getting for pushing him over to the edge to start making videos, and so I'm going to say it again, guys. If there's a, if there are any of you out there that are sitting on the fence thinking about making videos and posting them on, on FlossTube. Uh, I encourage you to do it. It's, it's great fun. There are lots of rewards and it's a, it's a really kind of a neat feeling to be able to uh, share what you're working on with uh, other people. So that's all I have for this video. And once again, I wanna thank you for spending time with me. Thank you for watching. Thank you for uh, liking my videos. Thank you for commenting. I enjoy all of your comments. If you have any questions about what I'm working on, any questions about how I stitch, anything at all, uh, feel free to, to ask me those questions in the comments. I'll, I'll, uh, I will respond in the comments and I also may uh, respond in my next video. So feel free to, to like and subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. Um, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again next month. Thanks. Uh, we'll talk to you later. Goodbye.